And so what you have in the party at the moment, uh, which is a fundamental issue, uh, is the lack of legitimacy in any recognizable sense by the institution itself of the leadership. Now, when you add to that uh, the issues of should we have political reform, as Ian said earlier, poor Mr. Wen Jiabao, the Prime Minister, has been talking about that for years. I think he wants his place in history because nothing has happened, but maybe one day it will and people will remember. Uh, but uh, there are people who want political reform, at least at a slow pace. There are others who regard it the, as absolutely the worst thing that could possibly happen to the Chinese Communist Party. I mean, if the general secretary who comes in in October or November came into the Politburo Standing Committee or the Politburo one day and said, comrades, I've had an idea. Let's try democracy. <laughs> He'd be out. I mean, there are 18 million people whose privileges, perks, income, wealth, corruption, depends on being a member of the Communist Party. It's a wonderful Rotary Club to be a member of. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think the, there are many other problems with the party, but I think the fundamental one is that they have not got their act together institutionally so that in October when the Party Congress meets, everyone will say that Xi Jinping has been chosen as a result of a process which I recognize. Laying out of hands by Deng Xiaoping or Mao Zedong may not seem much, but it was very important. And Xi Jinping doesn't have that. Ian, last word. Well, I think the, to, to answer your question also about other factions, there are factions in the party, but I don't think it's as clear as in the past where you could say there's a reformist wing and there's a, a conservative wing and so on and so forth. I think there are a lot of different interest groups. It's become very complex, some people supporting large state-owned enterprises and so on and so forth. Um, and I, that, that also creates this logjam. Uh, that it's harder to negotiate all of these interest groups that are clogging up the system. Sounds kind of like the United States. I was thinking the same <laughs> <Yeah>. thought. <laughs> uh, so um, I, I'm not, I, I don't think you'll see that kind of a division or the, the top is certainly not riven. I don't think of the nine or seven people, however many are in the standing committee, three are on one side, four on the other or, any, or anything like that. Uh, there are people in the party who are very pro-reform and very outspoken and you know, there are 80 million party members, so you do have people who are in favor of democracy in the party. Um, but by and large, those people don't have a voice and it's in a way, it's kind of like the mafia. I mean, to get to the top of it, you're not going to be um, advocating uh, democracy and, and that sort of thing. So I don't see the current leadership making any fundamental changes. Uh, there, are, there is a case to be made that Xi Jinping might have a bit more clout because he's a princeling, the son of a revolutionary veteran. He might have a bit more of a power base. He's got good ties to the military. Uh, people had made similar arguments a decade ago about uh, Hu Jintao. So I'm, I would be very cautious. I think there's always a lot of optimism at this time of year. There's new leaders are coming in. Let's hope they're better than the old ones. And here's my case why it should be. Uh, I don't mean to be pessimistic. I just don't think people really know very much. He's never made any programmatic statement. He's never come out in favor of anything. And that's why he got where he is, right? Because he's, <laughs> he's, he's a psycho. And Ian, it's interesting. Even after 10 years in office, Hu Jintao has never really revealed himself. Yeah, what, is, I mean, what does he stand for? Yeah. It's an interesting he stands thing. for himself remaining in power. And the party stability. I mean, that's right. been his keyword: yeah. stability, harmony, right. those kind of things.